Yo, YouTube back with the video today. It's more of a, it's a football video, but it's not a reaction. Today we're going to talk. Topic of discussion. Will Malik Willis take Jordan Love's spot as QB1? The way he's been playing the past few weeks. My friend asked me that. Listen, I love Jordan Love. He led us to a playoff win, playoffs in his first year as a starter. Don't forget, he was on the team. This also, hold on, side rant. This drink, this drink is like low key very good. If you guys drink this, I just want to be clear this is not beer. This is a Spanish drink. But anyway, the way, what was I saying? I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah, he led us to a playoff in his first year as a starter. Don't forget, he's been on the team since 2021, got to be alongside Aaron Rodgers to the 2023 season. Three years. This is about to be his fourth or fifth year. First year as a starter led us to a playoff win. Which is dope. Which is dope. You don't expect a quarterback in their first year to do that. The second half of that season last year was a big turnaround for Jordan Love. And this year was supposed to be his year. Signs that big pay contract. Got injured the first game. Malik came and he tripped on his... Malik. Not gonna lie, I had... When I saw that we got a new quarterback, I was like, all right, because Michael Pratt was ass, Sean Clifford's ass, and then we got Malik Willis from the Titans, and I'm like, all right, hope he's good. Then he came in for like one play for the game against the Eagles, and he could not throw that ball. I was like, oh God, we're screwed. But then, out of nowhere, Malik is coming and making these plays, running, throwing, everything, and we're winning. Malik is MVP candidate status. Green Bay is going to have the comeback of the year. Quarterback gets injured. The backup helps us win a few games. Listen, I love Malik. He's done great things. Do I think he could take Jordan Love's spot as QB1? Yes. Would it happen? I don't think so. Matt LaFleur put all this stuff into Jordan Love. But I think... I think right now, the, def the offense is... There's two different playing styles. Jordan Love, Malik Willis. They both have different play styles. You barely see Jordan Love run the ball. He's mostly throwing it downfield far. Malik Willis, he runs that ball. He runs Jordan Love. You don't see Jordan Love run really much with the ball unless he has to. Malik, he'll be running with the ball. But when he's running with the ball, it's for a good damn reason. But like... The, Jordan, the way Jordan Love plays and the way Malik plays is different. And I think the offense... Had to get used to Malik's play style to bounce off of that. And I think with Jordan Love, Mike coming back this weekend against the Vikings, the offense is going to be a little slippery because they're going to have to go back and play to Jordan Love's play style. But I think with Jordan Love's injury, like if Malik was not doing as good as he was, I would say, yeah, we need Jordan Love back right now. The way Malik's playing is at a top tier level. If Jordan Love stays out for the next few weeks, no one's going to care because... Malik is here, and he's the guy. It's not like another team situation where Tua's, Tua for the Dolphins. I'm sorry for my friend. Sorry that I'm ridiculing the Jets, but it had to happen. Tua's out for the Jets. They bring in their backup, Skylar Thompson. He's trash. And now everyone wants Tua back, but his concussion was so bad, we're not seeing him back for a while. They did sign Jeff Huntley, a Pro Bowl quarterback, to their squad, but... I don't think we'll see him because we all know that Mike McDaniels is going to choose Skyler. You remember last year for the Dolphins, there was one game, I forgot what game it was, where the Dolphins were winning by so much, Mike McDaniels actually went inside of the, 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 went to the bleachers and was actually having fans call plays. And every play the fans called were, were good plays. Listen. And then Matt LaFleur, credit to him, Jeff Huntley, credit to them. We got rid of the dude from last year who made the defense real bad. I forgot his name. Our team is awesome now. I want to see Malik keep playing. I love watching Malik. I miss Jordan Love. I miss watching him. But at the end of the day, the, like I said, the offense has tatered, catered their style to Malik. They found out how Malik plays and they... Go off of that. Coming back and bringing in Jordan Love 
I don't think Jordan Love's ready. I don't think he's there at that level he was. Like, he could be there and ready to play right here. But to play how he was playing last season at the end during that playoff game against the Cowboys, the game in the, the Vikings and New Year's Eve, and that Thanksgiving game, he's not at that top level yet. Malik's there. Malik proved he carries the team. Malik is everything. And he's getting more and more comfortable throughout the week. And Matt LaFleur doing a great job making it comfortable. Remember, this is his fourth week in Green Bay. Got signed the last week of August. And ever since he got just signed, he has been learning that damn play call. Now, I got to give credit to Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, that man is a dude, that man's a beast. I'm so happy we signed him. He had a slow start on the team during that game against the Eagles, making me almost regret why the hell did we sign him. But then he came out last week against the Titans and the Colts the week before and showed out. Malik is really getting him to work that potential. Malik has been working with Josh Jacobs on them run plays. You know, And it's just been awesome. What would I... It would be awesome. So Matt LaFleur. All I'm saying is... If you do end up putting Malik as QB1 for the season... And Jordan Love is QB2 as a backup... Which I don't think will happen. Because that would be the shocker if it did. I personally wouldn't care. Because Malik proved he can carry the team. Now, if you're looking at someone like... Who's it like Tua? Like I said, Tua and Skyler. Without Tua, the offense is trash. The defense is not playing. They just signed like, I think two or three defensive people. One from the Ravens and one from the Chiefs. Um, This week to the Dolphins. But Skyler Thompson's not it. That's the case where you say, hey, we need a good QB who can carry the team while the backup's gone. While the number one's gone. Malik... Proved it. Skylar Thompson needs to prove it. The last time he played a game, I think, was in 2022 when Tua had his last concussion. Ass. And like I'm saying, these quarterbacks this season, Dak Prescott, we know how he is. He be throwing to his friendly ghost friends. You remember that playoff game last year? He was throwing to the ghost Casper and Wendy. Casper down the sideline trying to get that touchdown. Casper can't catch because he's invisible and can't see the fucking ball. He can't catch because the ball goes right through him. And then you got Wendy, and Wendy's here intercepting the ball from Dak. He throws to his ghost friends. That game last night, which I have to make a reaction video to right after this, proves a lot, proves a lot. Um, but quarterbacks like Dak Prescott, Baker Mayfield, Trevor Lawrence especially, Skyler Thompson. Um, who else? I'm trying to think of other quarterbacks. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. Count, and I think it's a few other quarterbacks. Count your days because you guys ain't winning games. You guys ain't making. Joe Burrow too. How are the the Chiefs? I mean the the, the Bengals gonna be zero and three? How are the Bengals zero and three? I want to see Jake Browning, and I don't want Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's washed. Travis Kelsey's washed. He's another story. People are saying this might be his last season because he's not playing like he used to. Listen, when you're dating a girl like Taylor Swift, I wouldn't want to play like that either. Taylor Swift is draining him out. It's Taylor Swift's fault. That Taylor Swift's fault. But anyway, count your days because if you guys can't win this weekend, it's over. Jerry Jones. You need to do something with the Cowboys. <laughs> the way the Cowboys are playing, they're not playing like they were a few seasons ago. They are not playing. You wonder why you don't win no playoff games. You sign all your players to big contracts an hour before the first game of the season in week one. You couldn't even get Jeff Huntley or that guy from the Ravens, that, the, that Huntley dude from the Ravens because... You didn't have enough money. You would have had enough money if you didn't sign CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and Dalvin Cook into the season late. But back to the Packers. Malik Willis, um, I think 
for this week. I don't know. Do I think Malik Willis is ready to take on the Vikings? When you're going up against Sam Darnold, who's doing amazing, hasn't had this good of a career start since being with the Jets when he first got drafted in the NFL. You got him. You got your newly acquired Aaron Jones, who Aaron Jones put out a statement like two, three days ago about his time in Green Bay and how he thought no one believed in him. Matt LaFleur, he was a backup running back. And he would play a few snaps because the main running backs were injured. Aaron Rodgers saw something in Aaron Jones. And the last play of the game before the playoffs, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers called a timeout and says, I want 33 in there. Put Aaron Jones in. And Aaron Jones believed, Aaron Rodgers believed in Jones. Aaron Jones also said that. The defensive coordinator at the time for the Packers and Matt LaFleur. Because don't forget, 2020, um, Mike McCarthy went to the um, Cowboys and we got Matt LaFleur. Which, thank God, he's a great. He's great. But he said that Matt LaFleur and the defensive coach at the time went to his dad's, Aaron Jones' dad's funeral. His dad's funeral because his dad died from COVID. A, I think a week or the day he was signed to the NFL. I know. it's Wow, it's weird. It's crazy. It's crazy. But he said he has all the love and respect for the Packers. And he said he's going to seem weird being on the opposite sideline. But I think for the Vikings game, we need Jordan Love. I'm sorry. Malik has been playing to a high level. But I don't think he's ready to take on the Vikings. When you got Sam Darnold, Aaron Jones, Justin Jefferson, they don't got their wide receiver, Allen Thielen, anymore. Allen Thielen got traded to the Panthers, which was a huge-ass mistake. Who else do the Vikings have? Hold on, guys. Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler as your running back. Justin Jefferson as wide receiver. Jalen Knorr. And then everyone else on the team, I don't know who you are. I don't know who everyone, anyone else on this team is besides the offense. Besides the QB, the running back, the wide receiver, I don't know anyone else. Ed Ingram, right guard, he's great. Love him. Right offensive guard, he's great. But Justin, it's going to be a matchup. Justin Jefferson against Jair Alexander. Jair's better. You, don't, you remember, I'll put the clip. You remember when Jair... Gritty on Justin Jefferson after that sack. Anymore, he showed up on tape. He's learning. He's not a rookie anymore. Second and ten. Here we go up top sideline and incomplete. And that was Alexander who broke it up. Oh, he's got a little gritty right next oh, to who can do it. A few years ago, that was amazing. But listen, but listen. I don't think Malik's ready to. I don't think Malik's ready to play against the Vikings offense. Hold on. Apparently there's a fire truck. Hold on, guys. Apparently there's a fire truck outside the house. I'm just making sure someone's okay because my mother's outside right now. You know, her or anything can happen. Mother. Mother, stop being nosy. Stop being nosy, mother. Mother, 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 be nice, be nice to them. Be nice to them, mother. Don't even talk to me anymore. No, I said be nice to them, mother. No, you were just yelling at them. 
Oh, up, here comes the ambulance. Here comes the ambulance. Got the fire truck and the ambulance. Oh, wow. <sighs> but anyway, but anyway. Um, yeah, Malik's not ready to start against this Vikings team. I don't think he's ready in any means, but I don't mind him playing. Um, but yeah, that's my stand. I don't think Matt LaFleur would make Malik quarterback one for the season, but if it happens, my opinion, I won't be mad. I'll be damn happy knowing that at least if he's QB1, we're still going to be winning games. But other with that being said, that's it for this video. I have another video coming out about the Thursday night game, which will be out by the time this video is out. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.